When I think of the landscape in the country, I think of natural beauty. Or something that's not meant to be beautiful, like a wool shed. But because time's passed, it is. But what happens when you get a garden designer from the city, add those elements of the country together, you create something that is perfect and unique and so quintessential Australian. This stunning and surprising dry garden is the work of award-winning Melbourne designer, Richard Bellamo. Given the climate the designers had to deal with, what an achievement. Over 40 degrees in summer, freezing in winter. So good plan selection was the key to this innovative garden success. So the garden's split up into zones. This first one here is the dry garden, but it doesn't look dry because it's so full. These stones here, well, they're called honey granite. They've traveled about an hour and a half down the road and been plonked into sight. They had a massive B double of stone. Now this is a little acacia, a wattle. Now you normally expect them to be a great big tree, but this one is a ground cover. And as you can see, there's no chance of weeds growing through it because it's about oh, 40 or 50 centimetres thick. Grass tree there, great investment in the future because they're expensive to buy and hard to transplant. And then this castle main granite, which is kind of planted like the skeleton of a dinosaur or something, is pretty eye-catching. And I like these green cushions. They look lush and green like they need a ton of water, but I know they're not getting it because they're planted next to these cousin hits, which are ridiculously drought tolerant. This garden's full of surprises, like the old miner's shed. And dotted around the garden, you'll also find some beautiful original sculptures. This one's made out of those huge nails that you see going through sleepers on a railway line. And the other one is the plough disc that would have worked the land here that have been welded together to make that beautiful ball. And this is where the old starts to meet the new in Australian garden design. You can see that they've got their old rustic boiler there. Now that would have kept the steam up either to work for gold or work the farm. And because that rust colour is so dominant, you can see it in this stone. This structure is made out of Wisto, which has beautiful dark colours, but all these oranges and reds look like the rust of the boiler. And that ties in perfectly with these leucodendrons, because the top of them have the same red. And the star in this little garden is the euphorbias. They're playful, they look happy, and there's so many of them that, again, you don't have a chance of grabbing a weed. But the biggest surprise of all is in the shed. Very rarely am I lost for words, but this space here is work of a genius. And to think what it's got to work with. 40 something degrees heat on the high side and sub zero on the low side, and yet you've got a beautiful fern ring. It's kind of like a glass house. What the frame is, is just mimicking the old storage shed that used to be here. So from the street, it doesn't look like much, but inside, the temperature's dropped about 10 degrees. It's a lot shadier because the battens are nice and close together and you've got beautiful ferns and ground covers, like they've picked up a bit of the dane tree and dropped it here in Ballarat. And the water feature looks as natural as any little creek you'd see running through a rainforest. The big timber posts, well, they're actually piers out of Sydney Harbour that they sourced and found, moved here, and they look like they're the trunks of beautiful big gum trees growing up into the forest. The staghorns and the elks grow on them and it looks as natural as you'd see. 
and a clever inbuilt misting system keeps the moisture up, creating a unique tropical microclimate in the most unlikely place. The thing you notice in here the most is that you can just grow whatever you like, wherever you live, as long as you manipulate the environment.